Hello, everybody. I'm Graham from GrowthBook. With the sunsetting of Google Optimize, there's a lot of you maybe looking for a new A-B testing platform. And in this demo, I want to show you just how easy it is to continue A-B testing using your existing Google Analytics data uh, using the GrowthBook open source platform. So let's get started. All right, so first thing we're going to start with is connecting Google Analytics to BigQuery. So in order to do that, you need to create a BigQuery account. You can create a free account if you just go onto your Google Cloud console and then create a, a BigQuery uh, organization. And then we're going to create a project within that organization. I have a couple sample things already set up, but I'll just show you the creation project for a new one. So we're going to do uh, GA4 sample. Um, I'm going to put it in our existing organization. So let's create that. And now as this loads, we'll have a new project set up. Um, it's really very simple to get Google Analytics connected to BigQuery. <laughs> so now we have the BigQuery project and we have the BigQuery data set. So now we're going to um, connect that to our Google Analytics. So to do that, we'll hop over to Google Analytics. This is a, just a blank account. Um, and we're going to go to the admin interface. And then down the bottom here, you should see BigQuery links. So we're going to click on that. And then we're going to click link. Now this should, uh, and then we're going to choose um, choose a big query project. So this should automatically pull from the list we just set up. So we're going to choose the one that I just created, uh, GA4 sample, and we're going to confirm that. Click next. Um, we're going to import the data daily. Uh, you can stream this continuously, but it does require a paid account. Um, daily is usually enough. And then uh, we're going to submit that. Cool, so now Google Analytics is going to be connected to BigQuery, sending events there. It'll take about a day for the first data to show up. So um, if you just created this, be a bit patient for that data. Okay, so we're going to create a service account so that GrowthBook can connect to our BigQuery instance. So we do that, we go to the IAM section of BigQuery, and then we're going to go on to the left side here. There should be one tab called Service Accounts. And then we're going to click up here on the top here. It says Create Service Account. And we're going to enter the account name, GrowthBook. Uh, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. And then we're going to give it a description. All right, so we need to add three specific roles for this service worker. Um, so we're going to click on this, and we're going to type in BigQuery Data Viewer. And we're going to add another role here, and we're going to add BigQuery metadata viewer if I can spell that right there it is and we add the third one which is uh, BigQuery job user it's weird oh there it is okay cool so now we have the, the access level con uh, configured correctly for this new account we'll click continue All right, we're going to leave the third one blank. Um, those are optional parameters we don't really need for this demo. All right, so now we have this service worker account created. Uh, now we need, just need to grab the uh, keys. So we're going to go down here to Manage Keys. And then we're going to click here on Add Key. Create a new key. And we want to select JSON. And that will download a file. And that will allow us to connect from GrowthBook to the BigQuery instance. All right, so now we have BigQuery all set up and we're ready to connect GrowthBook to it. Uh, one of the problems though is that this sample account I just created has no actual data in it, so I can't show you how that would work. Um, so in order to show you some real data, I'm gonna switch over to another project I have here called GrowthBook GA4 Demo. Um, and this is uh, the, the account that I'm gonna use to, to demo. So uh, I did create a, a service account just like I did before and um, I just downloaded the, uh, the JSON key for this as well. Uh, so it's the exact same steps. Uh, so now we have this all set up, let's switch over to GrowthBook. So within GrowthBook, um, you can follow along the Get Started steps and they'll help you connect uh, and install the SDK. Um, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna show you the data connection part. Um, so GrowthBook is what we call warehouse native. So we don't actually ingest events ourselves. We connect directly to the, your data warehouse. In this case, we're going to connect directly to that BigQuery instance we just set up. So all your data stays on BigQuery. It doesn't actually go to GrowthBook. We only query it read-only, and all your event data is yours, and you control it. 
Um, and that way it's compliant with any um, regulations or, or um, HIPAA or GDPR or anything you have that uh, because we don't actually ingest any personal identifiable information. So we're going to go over here to data sources and then we're going to click add new data source. Now we ask you for the event tracker up front because that way we know the shape of that data. So we're going to click on Google Analytics and we automatically pre-select uh, BigQuery and then you can upload the JSON file key that we downloaded earlier. And then we're going to add the product ID and then the data set ID. If you need to grab these values, um, the product ID should be defined in the JSON key if you're using the JSON method. Um, otherwise, you can find it by clicking, uh, if we go back to the BigQuery uh, console, and if we click on the data source itself, I'm sorry, click on the data set itself, you should see this data ID row. And then this contains the product ID, which is the first part of this string, and the second part is the data set ID. So we can just copy this and enter it um, directly in here as well. Okay, so when we're happy with that, we'll click Save, and this will automatically connect to the BigQuery. So now we have our connection to BigQuery. So we've labeled it here our Google Analytics 4 connection. Um, you can edit the connection info at any point if you want and adjust some of the parameters. We sh you should also click on the View Schema Browser just to make sure it's working. Uh, if, it, if you don't see a connection here, you need want to maybe go back and, uh, and make sure that your data set or product ID are correct. You'll notice that we pre-populated a lot of the values here. Um, so we have uh, different identifier types, anonymous ID or user ID. And then we also have um, the, the exposure query or the assignment queries as well. So this tracks which users were exposed to which experiment and which variation did they get. We've also included a lot of other information like browser, uh, geographic information, operating system as well, which, which will automatically be used as dimensional data so that you can split the experiments by how it performed over this, those different dimensions. Uh, one of the really cool things about GrowthBook is that we make it easy for you, even if you don't know SQL uh, very well at all or, or at all, uh, we make it really easy for you to use GrowthBook as well. So if you go down here to the metrics section, there's a button that says discover metrics. And what we're going to do is automatically take a look at your BigQuery data and see if there's any events coming in that might be a good candidate for a metric. So here we've detected some metrics, um, so we can just turn on the ones that we want. So we have binomial or create, um, so the, the count metric. So basically the first visit doesn't really make much sense as a, a count metric. It does make sense as a binomial. Um, probably same with session start. Page view could also, could be both, um, but probably, yeah. And so we can just enable these if we want. Maybe we don't care about scrolling. Uh, I don't know what user engagement is. Um, we'll just get rid of some of these lesser value ones here. So we'll click create metrics and now we've automatically created those 12 metrics. So if we click on over to the metrics page we can see that here are the metrics that we've created and so for instance we can take a look at like um, uh, the page view count and we can do run analysis and this what the run analysis does is just look at the sample of your data and kind of show you roughly what the shape of this data looks like um, and so you can just validate that it's working correctly. Like if we look at uh, page views of binomial. Yeah, so we can just see that th this is correctly pulling in data over time. Um, and that means that when we use it in our experiment, we can expect this to be accurate. This is not joined to any experiment information yet. This is just the raw data of, of page views. Um, if you do need to select or adjust the query at any point, it's on the right here. You can just click edit and uh, make any adjustments that are needed. Um, if you want a custom metric that GrowthBook did not detect, you can always just add the metric yourself. Great, so now we have all the data pieces set up. So we are connected to your BigQuery instance where we can get the information about which users were exposed to which experiment, as well as all the metrics we're using for the experimentation reports itself. The final piece of the puzzle is to connect, uh, to actually be able to launch the experiments from within GrowthBook. So to do that, we need to add the SDK to your product or website. Unlike Google Optimize, which is rather limited in terms of how you can use it, it was mostly built for uh, client-side testing. GrowthBook supports client-side testing, server-side testing, mobile testing, really anywhere you can run code, you can run an A-B test with GrowthBook, including like edge workers and other places. Um, so to do that, we're gonna go over to the SDK side and click on SDK and we're gonna create a new connection. Um, so we're gonna choose uh, JavaScript Assuming you're going to want to do client-side testing, so we're going to give this one a name. We're going to call it uh, client-side JavaScript SDK. 
Um, and then we choose the environment we want this SDK to run for. So each environment has a separate set of features and flags that are enabled for it. So we're going to choose the production environment. And then we're going to, because we want to do uh, visual experimentation editing, we're going to enable this button here. The visual editor is part of our pro plan. Um, so that is an additional extra. It's not available entirely on the open source version. Um, so we're going to click Save here. And now we have a, an SDK connection uh, to our client. Um, we do automatically detect if this is actually running on your site. So far, we have not detected it, so that's why it's showing not connected, because I haven't actually hooked it up. Um, the actual implementation depends a lot on the tech stack and the software that you're running. Um, so we give some example code here. There's plenty of examples in our documentation as well. There's also ways you can load the uh, GrowthBook SDK via Google Tag Manager and other methods. Um, so once you have this integrated into your site, uh, we can then create an experiment. So we're going to go over to the Experiment tab, and then we're going to click Add Experiment. Um, here we can choose what type of experiment we want to add. So if we do have data that's already flowing in, like maybe you have your own way to bucket users, and you just want to use GrowthBook to do the analysis of an experiment, you can click this Analyze Experiment. Um, but for most of you coming from Google Optimize, you are probably going to want to use the Visual Editor or the Feature Flag way of doing experimentation. So we're going to click on Design New Experiment, I'm going to give this a name. Uh, we have a test experiment. Um, and then we can give it a hypothesis, but we, I'm just going to leave that off for now. You can target this at various uh, targeting conditions, like um, where certain browser user types or whatever attributes you want, you can, you can customize this as well. Um, the targeting conditions must match the attributes that you pass into the SDK. Um, so just be, be aware of that. We're going to choose six. Uh, to expose this based on ID, which is the default. And then we're going to choose the overall percentage of traffic we want to see this experiment. So we can start it off if we want to like run it for a small set of users, we can start off with like a 30% test or whatever it would be. And then we can ramp this up over time. Uh, we can customize the split if you'd like, um, but it is recommended to keep the split the same. And if you want to limit the exposure to limit the overall exposure and then ramp this up over time. In that way that if you do want to um, ramp it up, people will never switch from the A case to the B case. They'll always go from either included to not included or, or vice versa. Once we're happy with this, we're going to click Save. And now we can open the visual editor. So uh, we're going to choose the URL that we want to run this test in. So we're going to choose uh, GrowthBook. Uh, we do support some advanced options for the visual editor, so you can target multiple URLs. If you have multiple domains, you can um, you know, add as many uh, different destinations you want if you want to run across um, lots of different sites. We also support regular expressions, like you can get really complex with the targeting conditions here. But I'm going to hide all that and just uh, test on our main site. So I'm going to open the visual editor now and we can set up the test. So here we are, uh, and so here's the visual editor box, and then we can click on any element we want, like this title tag here, or h1 tag, and we can um, we can give this another another name, like I don't know. Whatever we want to uh, test out the new title. And then we can quickly switch between variations to see how they are different. And then you can even do some like DOM rearranging. We could move some of the elements around, um, whatever we want. A few other features here. We do have like a full CSS editor where you can adjust all the different attributes of this element. Um, you can also add different class names if you know that those would be, or you can like, you know, show or hide things with class names as well. Um, if you want to get really custom, we do support JavaScript per variation, so you can do redirect test, um, things like that. So once we're happy with this uh, changes, we're going to click Done Editing. And now the, the payload of all those like changes to the, the page are all queued up and ready to be sent to the SDK to implement. Um, so once we're ready, we can click Start Experiment. Uh, we actually automatically detected that the SDK is not loaded onto the application, but once that's there, this button will be um, clickable, and then you can run the experiment. Um, so at any point, you can add metrics to this experiment, even after the fact. So uh, we can choose the metrics we're trying to optimize for, like maybe we're trying to optimize for page views and file downloads, um, but it could be purchases or whatever you'd like. And once there's data here, uh, you'll start seeing results, but there's, there's no data here yet because this experiment is not live. So this is what you can expect the experiment reports to look like once you have everything set up. 
So at the top here we have meta information about the experiment. You can document any observations, why you run the test, uh, the hypothesis about what you were trying to do with this test, and then you can even document like screenshots of the different variations. At the bottom here we have the uh, actual analysis. This is using our Bayesian statistics engine. We also support frequentist and sequential analysis as well, and Cupid variation reduction, and some really advanced techniques that Google Optimize does not have. Um, so here we have one row per metric, and then we have the control version and, the, and then the width price version here on the top. Uh, the raw numbers are here in the middle, as, and then the effects of that are shown on the right here. So for instance, average order value is down by about 2%, um, but it's not a significant change. And then purchases is a significant change up at about 14%. Um, similarly, the revenue per user is up about 12%. So this test looks pretty good. Um, the other thing that GrowthBook has is this column here, which is risk of choosing. Basically, if you pick this variation and you're wrong, what's the most likely expected loss for that metric? In that way that you can actually move a bit faster, you may not need to wait for full significance on the experiment. If you just want to de-risk the rollout, you can wait till the, uh, the expected loss is beneath your threshold of risk. Um, we also support guardrail metrics. So guardrail metrics are ones that you're maybe not necessarily trying to improve, but you don't really want to hurt with this experiment. So you don't want to like, you know, improve one part of your product and then hurt a different part. So guardrails are, are really meant for that, and we'll show you um, kind of stoplight colors: red, light, red, yellow, green, if uh, depending on the status. Um, GrowthBook is fully transparent, so if you do have a data team, uh, we will actually give you the full queries that we use to run everything on GrowthBook. So this is uh, all the queries that are running. So you can grab this and run it yourself back in BigQuery or any other BI tool that you have. Um, so this it's not a black box where you're not really sure what's happening. We'll give you the full transparency there. Um, you can also do dimensional breakdowns. So we could break it down by those uh, dimensions that we saw earlier in the assignment query, things like country or browser. Um, and you can see how that experiment behaved with those different attributes. Yeah, so that's a brief look at how to do experimentation with GrowthBook, in particular with Google Analytics and BigQuery. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us at hello at growthbook.io. We do have a very popular Slack channel that you're also welcome to join. It's slack.growthbook.io as well if you have any questions on getting set up. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Happy experimenting. Bye-bye.